So today, I'm going to show you how to solve algebra equations where you have to combine like terms, but there's also fractions in them. All right, and I'm going to show you how to do it in two different ways, and you can just choose whichever method works best for you. All right, so we've got 2 thirds x plus 1 fourth x equals 33. And we know since we've got multiple groups of x's on the same side of the equal sign, our first step is to com combine them together. But before we can add these fractions up, we always have to have a common denominator before we can add them. So my first step is to change the fractions so that they have a common denominator. Now I know for 3 and 4, the common denominator is going to be 12. That's the least common denominator. 3 times 4 is 12, so 2 times 4 gets me the top here, 8 twelfths. 4 times 3 is 12, so 1 times 3 gets me the top here. And now I can rewrite this equation as instead of 2 thirds x, I'll use 8 twelfths x. Plus, instead of 1 fourth x, I'll use 3 twelfths x. And then I'll drop down my equals 33. So all I've done here is rewritten the equation with the fractions in common denominator form. Because now I can actually combine my like terms. I got two groups of x's on the same side, so I'll e add them together. 8 twelfths x plus 3 twelfths x is 11 twelfths x. All right. But now that I've done that, now I can solve this. All right. To undo a fraction, I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And when I do that, 12 elevenths times 11 twelfths undo each other and make one whole. So this is one whole x equals drops down. And 33 times 12 elevenths. Now, if I want to multiply this by hand, I can do that. I can multiply it out. But we can also use a calculator. We've got 33 times 12 elevenths. 36, I believe. There it is. So this equals 36. Boom. Got it. All right, so that's one way to do it. Find a common denominator, and then you can combine like terms. Now, I'm going to show you a second way that will eliminate all the fractions right from the beginning. Okay? Now, the second method, what we do is first we look at our fractions and find the common denominator, which in this case is 12. We already figured that out. But instead of changing the fractions, I'm going to multiply this whole side by 12. Or 12 over 1, let's say. That'll make it easier for us later. But what I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. OK. Now, when I do this, I have to multiply everything in here times 12. So it's a little bit of the distributive property here. All right. So when I multiply fractions, I do the top times the top. 12 times 2 is 24. Bottom times bottom, 1 times 3 is 3. And that's an x. Plus top times top, 12 times 1 is 12. Bottom times the bottom, 1 times 4 is 4 x equals, now on the other side, 33 times 12, that's 396. Now, at first you're thinking, why would I do this? This looks like a mess. But it turns out all of these fractions are just going to become whole numbers. Because think about it, 24 divided by 3, that's just 8. So this is 8x. Plus 12 divided by 4, that's just 3. So this is 3x equals 396. You see, by multiplying this whole thing by the common denominator, it will always multiply those fractions into fractions that make whole numbers. All right? And now, this equation is much easier to solve because we don't have to deal with adding any fractions. All right? 8x plus 3x is 11x. So I combine my like terms. And now I just divide both sides by 11, and I've got my answer x equals, and this is 36. All right, so two different ways to solve the same problem. It just depends on when do you want to eliminate the fractions. Do you want to eliminate the fraction at the very beginning, or do you want to wait till the end to undo the fractions? All right, and I will tell you, some algebra equations, it's easier to do this first method, and some of them are more complicated. It's easier to get rid of the fractions altogether. I would say for simple ones, do this method because Usually, for simple problems, the common denominator is pretty easy. But if you've got a whole bunch of diff different fractions in the same problem and a very complicated common denominator, you might want to use this method just to get rid of all those fractions right from the beginning. All right, so I hope this video helped you. If it did, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.